Today we're going to make some stars. Hi, hello. I am the Cyber Roof Guru. Thank you for watching. So as you saw during the intro, we're going to make some stars. Now, this is a project that has been in my queue for longer than I care to admit. Seriously. So this is something that I wanted to tackle probably two years ago. It's really easy and it's just something that I never got a chance to do. My own fault. Nobody else's. But we finally did it and here we are. So what is it? Well, so I wanted to create some stars for the tree that we have in our entranceway. If you are a longtime viewer or even a recent viewer that maybe perhaps has binged my channel, you'll notice that I've created a lot of 3D printed ornaments for this tree that we have in the front entranceway. So this one in particular is a series of Memorial Day slash 4th of July slash Labor Day sort of things that we can put on the tree that just kind of round out the complement of things that we added to the tree. So here we are two some odd years later and we are getting around to it. And by we really mean just me. So what I would like to do is jump into Fusion 360, show you the process of designing it, and then we'll print a couple of them in different colors, which you've already seen, and then we'll go ahead and put them on the tree. So let's go ahead and get over to Fusion 360 and get on with it. All right, well, here we are in Fusion 360. We're gonna start by creating a sketch and then create our star pattern. So we'll create the sketch on the base plane here. Fusion 360 does not have an inherent capability to create a star pattern, unlike some other programs like Inkscape. So what we need to do is use one of the existing primitives available to us to make the star pattern. So we're gonna use the polygon feature and then create a star using that. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna start by selecting create, go to polygon and selecting circumscribe polygon and we will create a polygon by drawing one out here, snapping it to this line, and then we want to say that it is 25 millimeters tall. Uh, nope, we want to say, hold on. We want to say five-sided polygon that is 25 millimeters tall, and we will snap to this horizontal profile here. There you go. All right, so now by having a 25 millimeter polygon that is half the distance, that actually gives us a 50 millimeter polygon total height. Okay, so next we wanna hit L to create a line and we will create a line from the apex here at the top down to the bottom, one from the top down to the other side, a line from the side apex down to the lower corner and a line from the other side apex down to the other corner and then a line from center to center here. And you will see there what emerges, the star pattern. Super easy, super easy to do. Now, you can delete these polygon lines if you want to. If you delete the lines, you cannot scale the star to a bigger or smaller size in the future. So what I would recommend you do is you actually select the polygon lines and you hit the X key which will turn the lines into construction lines. It will leave them in the actual sketch but it does not make them part of the geometry of the star. So you can still click on the polygon icon here and edit the polygon and change the size of the polygon but it does not make the lines part of the actual polygon. Okay. Perfect. All right, so next we want to create a little hook area that we can use to attach the star to the tree. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna create a little extension using a rectangle and then put a circle with another circle in the middle for the hook. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll hit R for rectangle. We're gonna create a little rectangle here and we want it to be 10 millimeters tall and three millimeters wide, just like that. And we will take and grab that rectangle and slide it down to about right there for now. We will add some constraints to it in just a minute to lock it into place. Next, we wanna create a circle right here. We'll make it six millimeters wide 
and then we want to create a circle on the inside that'll allow the hook to go through. So the way we want to do that is we're going to hit O for offset, and then we will offset the circle by a, let's see, a negative 1.5. Looks pretty good. Okay, so now that we have the rectangle and the circle drawn, we need to kind of lock them into position on the drawing. So the easiest way to do that is let's start with a rectangle and we will use the coincident constraint. We will select the corner and add a constraint between the corner and this line. That locks that line in on that other line. And then we will do the same thing for the other corner here. And you'll see how it pushes the rectangle up and locks it in to be on that line. And so based on the width of the rectangle, that determines the actual height uh, or the depth of the rectangle onto the star top. Next, we want to do kind of sort of the same thing. We want to say coincident here onto the corner there and coincident there onto the other corner. And that locks that circle into kind of right into the corners of that rectangle. Very easy, very simple, super cool. If you're not already digging the constraints on Fusion, I definitely recommend you dig into it and they just help out so much in making parts and getting things to line up and locking things in. It's super easy. Okay, so now we have the basic geometry of the star complete. There's a couple things we need to do now for the next operation, which is going to provide a nice 3D profile to the star. So let's go ahead and do that now. Number one, we need to trim the excess lines in the middle here for the star to create its final shape so that Fusion can actually bring it into the 3D space. So we'll do T for trim. We will trim these sections right here. And you will note how Fusion is putting in constraints there to lock all these elements together once you trim them. So we hit escape, we're done trimming for now. Now that we have the star created, next we need to create a sketch in the vertical plane to allow us to extrude that star up. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna select create sketch. We're gonna select the vertical plane here and we are simply going to draw a line straight up from the origin up 10 millimeters. There you go. Boom. That's it. That's all we need to do. Finish sketch. Now, this is the super cool part. We are going to bring that star up and we're going to loft it into that point using the loft command. Create, loft. We are going to select the perimeter. Now we want to zoom in a little bit and also select, whoops, not that guy, this guy right there. We want it to loft the entire star up, and then we want to select the rail by selecting this point, and boom, there you go. Click OK. Look at that. It created a star that comes to that point. So easy. Mind-blowing, right? OK, so next, we still need our hook, right? We need to have our hook. So what we want to do is turn the sketch right back on. We will hit E for extrude. We will select our pattern here along with, we'll zoom in a little bit, along with that little bit there in the circle. And we sort of need to select this guy here too. So it lofts it up a little bit, or should we say bring it, brings it in a little bit um, so that it contains it, you know, it joins it together. And so let's go ahead and bring it up one millimeter. There you go. And I want to say not cut. I want to say join, right? And it joins it in. There you go. Okay, so now that we have our little handle extruded, it's got these funny little artifacts right here that we need to take care of. This is super simple. So we'll hit E for extrude. We will select these two faces and we will pull these faces kind of into the star. But we want to change it from a cut into a join. And what you will see is those edges just blend right into the star and kind of make it a seamless appearance. We'll click OK. There you go. And there we have it. Let's turn the sketches off. And there is the star. Look at that. It's got a little handle. It's blended in nicely. It's extruded up. It looks wonderful. OK, this is amazing. What we're going to do is go ahead and we're going to export this as an STL, slice it, send it to the 3D printer, and print a bunch of them. And that's what we did.
All right, well, that was the design. I hope you liked it. Super simple, relatively easy to do, and easy to print, and that's really all that matters. Nothing stopping you from doing this yourself. So that's it. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, as always, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway, but leave your comments down below. Tell us why, and we'll make future videos better. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please do so. That's where I post a lot of pictures of projects like this. Get a sneak peek into what's coming up next on the channel. All right, that's it. I appreciate you getting this far. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing, ringing that bell. Very important these days. And don't forget to be inspired. I appreciate you getting this far. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget. <clears throat> All right, that's it. I appreciate you getting this far. <clears throat> uh, in, um, you gonna, you have to subscribe. Bring that bell. Very important. Place. All right, that's it. I appreciate you getting it. <clears throat> getting it. I. How many times have I done this? All right. All right, that's it. I appreciate you getting this far. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this kind of...